What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm gonna be talking about what's going on with the overall market. I'm gonna talk about some big news that's coming out and also what's happening with the economic data and how this may affect the market starting from the pre-market. Before I do anything like that, before I talk about SPY, Tesla, QQQ, let me just mention a couple of things real quick. Firstly, I am not a financial planner. Take none of this as financial advice. And also don't forget about the Weeble link. The offer ends very soon. Deposit any amount of money and you guarantee up to 12 free stocks. The offer ends in just 18 hours. So check it out, guys. This is your last day and it could be worth up to $3,000. Now, anyways, let's talk about the markets. What's going on right now? As you can see, many of these different tickers are red in the pre-market. If I just include the extended hours right here, you can see the market starting to decline. And in my video from yesterday, I told you there's a head and shoulders like formation forming. Okay. When I released the video, right, some people are talking about how, oh, the market's pumping again. And yes, it did pump just a little bit because we saw McHenry and McCarthy say some bullish things. But then I warned you guys, okay, if we're going to be bullish, we have to break and hold 421. We failed to get the confirmation. And then I completely uh kept my opinion. I didn't flip flop or change. And I told you guys there's a head and shoulders forming. It's clearly forming right here and then i told you guys we're likely going to see downside i still stand by that but let me just warn you guys about a couple of things uh if you're looking at the charts don't forget that at uh 15 minutes after the market opens at 9 45 a.m eastern time we have the chicago pmi report coming out this will cause an increase in volatility and then at 10 o'clock a.m eastern time we have the jolts job openings and then the jolts job quits this will also cause a lot more volatility. This is going to be very important for the Fed's policies. Don't forget about all of this data that's coming out every 15 minutes, basically. And then one hour after the market opens at 1030 a.m., we have some data from the Fed coming out, which is as significant as the jolts data. So be on the lookout. We have big data coming out. We have some Fed speakers later on. We have Harker, Jefferson, Beige, and a couple of others. Not as significant as I would say the Jolts data and the PMI, but it is still worth noting. Now, as the data has come out, we can see for now the stock futures are falling as traders are awaiting the debt ceiling progress in Washington. And you have to be very careful with this. From a technical standpoint, the market looks bearish. The market's likely going to see some downside temporarily. But if we get a lot of progress on this debt ceiling deal, because it's going to be passing the house, right? So, first, Biden and McCarthy made the agreement, right? But they are not in full power over the debt ceiling, right? We have a polycentric system. Now the debt ceiling uh, deal agreement has to pass through Congress. It's going to be passing the House for a vote, okay? And it's going to happen today, later on today. I think in many, many hours from now, they're going to be negotiating and voting on it. It's going to take a while, of course, Uh this is going to be very important. The moment this news comes out, this could cause the market to bounce, but it's likely going to take many, many hours and not happen immediately. And the market's going to likely drop before that ends up happening. However, there's also no guarantee they get the vote in today. So like I said before, I don't know when they're going to finish the vote. I mean, we have a couple of days left, so I'd rather just be very patient and see what happens. But for now, McCarthy and McHenry are saying some positive things. But anyways, we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, yes, this could cause the market to bounce, but I just don't know when this is going to come out. Uh, I will try my best to release a video the moment this comes out just to warn everyone. But it's likely going to take many hours, if not a couple of days, for this to happen. Now, besides that news about the debt ceiling, if we just throw that aside, I believe the market has downside coming. And it's likely going to happen anyways before the vote is in. It's extremely likely. Okay, and here's the reason why. If you look at the 30 minute time frame, we got this crossover as soon as yesterday on the PPO. The PPO opened up like this. We started to curl a little bit for an attempt for the bulls to, you know, break this trend. And they failed. We failed at 421. We failed miserably. And then the market just started trading sideways and we formed this right shoulder. So we had this left shoulder, the head, the, the right shoulder has formed. And if you look at the MACD wide open, RSI is also uh dropping pretty hard we're losing lots of relative strength right now spy is currently in the 418s okay uh looking at this formation it's very uh obvious that spy is going to make a small attempt to try to hold 418 and it's likely going to fail okay yes we're gapping down could we gap up first try to fill that gap and then drop that's also a possibility but i'm not really leaning in that direction 
Regardless, the bigger move is going to be us coming all the way down this imbalance around the 415.5 area. And we're likely going to drop around the 415s uh, very, very soon. If 415 fails, the next very, very important level will be closer to about uh, 413.5. Then we have the 412s after that. But for now, I'm just looking at the 415 area. I'm very confident SPY is going to test 415 very, very soon. Okay, guys, I'm warning you right now. Now, for the QQQ, it's the same. <laughs> this is pretty funny. It's the same. Uh, crossover on the PPO, lots of bearish momentum yesterday. It made an attempt to bounce at this 348 support around the 50 EMA. And we're currently below the 50 EMA. It's currently at 348 flat. So what am I seeing on here? Well, it has this imbalance all the way down in 340. I'm not saying it's going to come that low, but that could depend. But the next level to watch from the QQQ is going to be this 345 support. The QQQ is likely going to come down and retest 345. And it may make an attempt to either bounce here. So you have to watch for confirmation. If 345 fails us, it is most likely going to retest 342 to about 340, between this 342 to 340 zone, because we have this imbalance right here. Because the algos will likely start selling if we get that break. And the algos are going to dictate the price of this. So that's what I'm seeing on the triple Q. The odds favor more downside. Uh, last but not least, for Tesla, I know I forgot to mention this yesterday. I'm so, so sorry about that. Uh, Tesla had a bearish divergence developing. And it's likely going to see a slowdown. However, it's holding up very nicely compared to the market. It has some relative strength to it. As the market sells off, it's very likely Tesla is going to retest uh, 198 to 197.5. Tesla could try to hold it if we get enough buyers, but it's likely going to drop just a little bit. And then we'll see how much Tesla tries to hold. Because like I said before, Tesla has some relative strength, but I'm seeing it likely retesting 197.5. And if that fails, and I think the odds do favor that, we might see Tesla test 195. I'm going to be looking at this gap down here, 195 to 193. But make sure you watch for confirmation at 197.5 first. If that breaks, we're going to be looking for the mid 190s. And the odds greatly favor that because the QQQ and SPY clearly have more downside potential. And overall, Tesla's formation on the charts, it, it's also forming kind of what looks like a head and shoulders. We had a bearish divergence developing right here. And overall, it's just looking a little bit weaker as time goes on. We have a wide open MECD, so the momentum is going to favor the bears into open. So be very, very careful with Tesla. Yes, Tesla is going to try to get some buyers around 197.5, but there's no guarantee they're going to be able to hold this thing up. And uh, let me also add that uh, just for a couple of other tickers, Coinbase is up. I'm sorry, it's down 3.25%. I warned you guys about this. We got a retest of the 200 EMA at 58. Watch 58 carefully. If that fails, there's you know there's this gap all the way down to like the 57. 0.06 then we have like the 56.3 area uh, apple's a little bit down i predicted this too i told you guys apple would likely pull back a bit and the odds are greatly favoring in my opinion apple coming down to about this 175 area it's currently at about 176.8 but it, it could drop as long as it breaks below the 50 it's likely going to do that it's barely testing the 50 right now uh nvidia is down i predicted nvidia would drop all the way down to 390 we're currently at 393 right now as predicted what I said yesterday is coming true for now. Uh, so watch this all carefully. The odds are going to favor downside. Just be uh, uh, just be well aware that Congress has some big stuff going on right now with the whole debt ceiling. Once the news comes out about them potentially voting on this, we're likely going to see the market react. We could even get a small bounce in the markets, but this is not going to happen immediately. It's going to take many hours, if not a few days. Uh, this may not happen. The vote may not happen until like later today, until like the afternoon to evening. And until then, the market has time to drop. And I think the odds favor that. So watch the levels I talked about. Watch support carefully and remain calm, cool, and collected. Guys, get ready for the trading day. It's going to be lots of fun. And please don't forget about the Weeble link. The offer ends very, very soon. Thank you. And I'll see you guys later on.